Welcome to our Derivant Artist Talks. Um, today we're going to have watercolour artist uh, Leanne Jones. We've changed our artist talks into artist demonstrations this year because we thought we had mm. sort of create a bit more interest. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Leanne has practically been drawing from the moment mm. <laughs> she could hold a pen or a brush. Or a bit of wallpaper <laughs> that came bit, off. A bit of wallpaper, <laughs> negative space, that kind of stuff. H3, That's right. belting. <laughs> Um, she has a gallery studio called Mellow Crest up in um, the Hawkesbury Highlands. Yes. Um, she's a member of the Macquarie Towns Art Society and she's the current Vice President of the Hawkesbury Artist and Artisan Trail. That's right. And has won numerous awards um, and has work in private collections in Australia, the United Kingdom and the USA. Yeah. And also is the great, 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 great grandchild of... Sir Joshua, Sir Joshua Reynolds, um, so she has great pedigree. Mm. <laughs> and that, well, it was a lovely surprise, but I, I, I used to get into trouble a lot. And my grandma next door would say, "Oh, don't, you know, don't go mad at her. She can't help it. It's in the family." And I just didn't. You know, when you're little, you don't pay attention to what the oldies are saying. You think, "Oh, this is boring. I'll go outside." So. Yeah. So yeah. now it has become a bit more relevant. Yes, it has. <laughs> well, I did sort of, because I used to say I can't help it. Mm. I really couldn't. Yeah. yeah. Well, so it justifies why I couldn't I'm help it. I'm very grateful that um, you continued not helping yeah. it because yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. why we're so delighted to have you here today. Thank to you. To show us your mixed media techniques with um, your amazing watercolourist skills. Thank you. So, thank you very much. All right. Just thank you, Eliza. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, that was a lovely introduction. So I have been painting with watercolours for many, many years. I probably got my first watercolours, I think, when I was around six, but I had butcher's paper, because Dad was a butcher. So that was crap. You know, that was just terrible. You can't paint on comic books or butcher's paper. So when I did get some watercolour paper, I was so precious with it, I was because it was quite expensive, apparently. But that's where my love of watercolour has come from. And as I said, when I was about three, I pulled wallpaper off the wall, which came off in the shape of a train. And I filled, filled in the details with curly smoke and a stick man. So that's my earliest foray. And I still remember it because I got into huge bother. <laughs> um, so yeah, after I left school, I worked in advertising, went to the National Art School and studied there, much to my mother's chagrin, because she wanted me to be a secretary. And I lasted one day at secretarial school and walked out, but not for me. So over the years, I've raised my family, I've helped my husband in our business, but I've always had my love of art. And as a teenager, I was probably a bit odd because I wasn't out chasing boys. I was at the, Nash the New South Wales Art Gallery quite often on the weekends, just wandering around looking at paintings. So. I just felt like I have to take this further because I was being asked, do I teach? Do I do demonstrations? And I thought, well, why not? Because I'm happy to share my talent and my techniques. I have been to demonstrations and workshops occasionally where tutors don't tell you everything. And it's like their little secret. And I think that is silly because you can't take those secrets with you. It's just silly. So if you have questions, please ask me. But um, Eliza's been very kind. Derivan, Matisse Derivan have been making watercolours, which I've been asking her about for a couple of years. So I've been testing them, and that's what this pile of papers are. So I'm going to use some of these paints today. And I'm going to actually start by showing you how to apply this modelling compound, because I do like textures in my paintings. Um, these don't have it. But it's, it's called light modelling paste. And it's, yeah, I've got that. So this, this is sort of a, I really like the texture. It's quite silky and it does have a sheen to it. Is it like dry to Yeah, I've got a, uh, no, it's just white. Yeah, the paint sits on it really nicely. So this is, this will probably end up being a tree trunk or something, but I just thought I'd, I'd do a little bit of this. So applying it in the shape of rocks or a cliff, you can scrape it. See, it's quite smooth, it's quite silky. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't use masking fluid because I think it gives a horrible edge. It's too hard and it's hard to soften the paint after you remove it. So this, this tape is just good quality masking tape. And I actually, um, no, it, it's a bit hard on hot pressed paper. It does remove a little bit of the top surface, but this is a rough, Archer's rough, I think. So yeah, you can just sort of squidge this around with a palette knife. You can do all sorts. You, you know, this takes a little while to dry, but I did um, the one that I'm going to work on today overnight. And it just yeah, I've got something. I'll just show you this. How uh, I always use 300 grams, or if it's a huge painting, full sheet, I use 640 grams because um, 300 gram paper tends to um, cockle. I use a lot of water, so, but I find taping it down. I've never, ever, ever liked stretching paper with round tape. It just doesn't rock my boat. It does. And then you lose some of your image because you've got to cut the paper, the, the tape off. So you can, you could do it roughly like this, just how I'm doing it. And you can get some, um, Glad wrap into it and other little things that, or goodies that you could find around the place. Even one of these, you can make some nice, interesting sort of textures dragging that through. So you can see that it's probably hard because it's white on white, but you, you just scumble it on, pushing it here and there. Uh, it, it does on a hot day. I had this one that I'm going to work on. I just did it yesterday afternoon and let it dry overnight. But um, anyway, so we do that. So this is, this is like that orange bag that you buy. And I just sort of break it up. So as you can see, it looks quite ratty. But you can push it in to that and leave it there for a little while. So I might put a bit there. And then we just get glad wrap. Just put it on there and you can just start pushing it around. So you'll see on this one when I start painting on it that I've already got texture and the paint will sit there. So you could you could pinch it, you can do all sorts of shapes. So you can see it's sitting under there. So that, if you're doing that, you probably should leave it on for a, a few hours at least before you peel it off or overnight if you can. So that's just one way that I might make, because I live in the mountains, I really like painting some of those scenes with the rocky cliffs and tree trunks in front of them. So I just, yeah, this is one way to do it with watercolour. And why I like watercolour is because it's very transparent and you can lift it off if you've made a mistake. So that's how I would just put that aside for a day or two or till I'm ready to paint on it. You shouldn't leave masking tape on for more than a few weeks though because it can adhere and you might never get it off. So, all right. So I've just returned from a trip late last year to the Flinders Ranges. And I'm going to try and do a bit to this painting today. But that's just another example of how I've got this one prepared. And if I have time, I'll do a bit to it. But you can just do a tree trunk against rocks and use those colours. I mean, I don't think you should always necessarily paint it exactly as you see it. And especially, a, f a photograph doesn't sort of do, gives you as much information as a drawing. So I quite often, when I'm away, just do little pencil. This is called Wolf's Carbon Pencil but, or charcoal. You could use charcoal. But it just gets your ideas down. And when I come back, I've got colour swatches, I've got sketches and photographs because I don't always have time to paint outdoors. And the, with watercolour, it takes a while to dry, especially when you're in the bush and you haven't got a hairdryer. So. <laughs> so that's how I approach my work quite often. I also sometimes make something up from my imagination because I think artists 
see things very differently. And some artists, I feel like I have a photographic memory sometimes. So I can pull something out and think, that view, I have to paint it. I'd love to be... I saw a guy recently on YouTube. I think he's American. He's um, Afro-American. He's an idiot savant. Yes. And he can draw from memory. Yeah, he was doing a panorama in a curve of a city and it's all exact, just from looking at it. That's wow. incredible, yeah, yeah. And he just uses a, like a pencil pen, yeah. All right, so we'll get some paint mixed up. So these little paint tubes I've got here, these are a new release by Matisse Derivan and I've been quite happy with the quality and I'm not sure Eliza will probably advise us on cost but um, I think it's great to have another brand that's Australian because we only have our art spectrum and unfortunately I find some art spectrum colours dry out in the tube and I have written about it and the other thing that the, sometimes happens with them the lids break inside and the paint dries so I have students that use it and then they'll be quite annoyed because they can't um, use it and I said well you could be if you really wanted to be on it you could put them in a container split it put in a container with water but it's a lot of process to go through to make it liquid enough so don't be afraid of model, light modeling paste have a go at it if you want to paint rocks or anything like that it's great fun and the paint will sit on this So this is hot press paper, it's probably hard to see with the light, I'll try and hold it at an angle, but you can see that I've got light modelling compound across there, so the, yeah, from that rock, or the rocks, I think it's the ABC range, and it's in the, at Aruna, near where Sir Hans Heysen painted, and I didn't know when I went to South Australia that I was going to actually be where he painted. Yeah. yeah, so we had a lovely time, but I've come back, I, I took about a thousand photos, <laughs> because I, as I said, I, if we're travelling I can't paint every day, but we did spend a couple of days at Aruna, and it was great fun. Right, so I'm going to get to work, and I'm going to, I actually won't do the sky first, I think I'll just try and do this down here. Um, watercolour brushes, you can use all sorts of brushes, I've got these goat hair hakes, um, sort of synthetic brushes. These are uh, sable ester, very expensive, but beautiful brushes. So just have a variety of brushes if you're a watercolorist that do all sorts of things. Like you can use those. Um, I always have a brush like that for scrubbing out, which is just for acrylics. So it's a, I think it's called a yeah, stiff in synthetic right, and they're invaluable. And they're only about six dollars. I mean, some people go out and buy the best of everything. I've had students that come with everything that you could imagine under the sun and more that's not on my list <laughs> that I give them. Okay. All right. I might mix it in these bowls so you can sort of see what I'm doing there. I've got some magenta. We didn't find magenta? No. Okay. I thought they, these were all ready to go, but they're mock-ups. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm helping myself to magenta and I'm glad Eliza told me because it wasn't magenta. <laughs> yeah. And on this, um, I'm also going to, to spray after I've got the paint down. Um, it's called surface tension breaker. And that's what is in a lot of these paintings to create the textures. And I'm not sure really what's in it, Eliza, but it's sort of soapy. Yeah. Some sort of a detergent. Yeah, could be like detergent, but I just keep it in this little container because it's a little atomizer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, well, this is Daniel Smith, this magenta. Yeah. Most of the colours I use are. Um, it's got a little bug. Bugs drowned in the magenta. <laughs> um, got that. 
Yeah. All right, well, we've got some of that. So this is a Matisse Derivan um, yellow oxide, which is quite similar to raw sienna, I think. It's always confusing. Different paint companies call their paints by different names, and I think um, I had a yellow deep, which I thought was like an Indian yellow, which is quite good. Okay, so you just start dropping it in. You could even pour it on if you want. Because what will happen is it will start to settle into the dried modelling paste. And I like a lot of paint and a lot of water. And painting with bowls is quite good. You can use a palette. But I quite often just get out bowls of paint and push it around a bit. So I wouldn't use a good sable brush probably on a rough surface like that. Just use a cheaper one. A little bit more. It's just like if you're painting on a, a humid day, it's going to take a bit longer. If it's a hot day, it will dry fast. So that's one thing that when I did try and paint in the Flinders, because it was quite warm, um, it was drying too quickly and I did struggle. Some, some days I just used oil pastel and sketched. Okay. So wet in wet, just let it running and starts spreading it a bit. The colours out there in the fenders were just out of this world. They really were. And I was um, pinching myself to be in this beautiful place camping. Yeah. There were emus wandering around, lots of birds even just looking at the rocks in the riverbeds because they're all fossilised. There's so many fossils in those rocks, you've got no idea. Okay. So why I have a towel is that I usually let it run off a bit. I find if I put yellow down under red, the red's more intense than if I put it straight on the paper. Probably do the sky last on this. I'm hopeful of getting a full moon appearing, which I'll show you how to do. Okay. So this has got a beautiful purple in it. So I'm going to use some of the Matisse purple that I've got. That's it there. And that's lovely, isn't it? I might even put a bit. I use neutral tint too sometimes just to make it darker. Oh, what's um, well, it's, I'll show you on a scrap of paper. It's yeah, it's neutral. It neutralizes. Let's see. It's um, almost like a sepia y black. Um, so, like that. But when you put it in your darks, it gives them a lot more oomph. So there'd be neutral tint in that. That's in Dantreen Blue, which is a Windsor & Newton Blue. And it's much deeper than um, French Ultra. Okay, so I might add a little bit of that to there. And I'll put a bit of blue in. So you can see that that's 
drying a bit now and it'll settle into the little ridges. And then what, what I do towards the end is put some ink in. Oh, it's all right. This is, this is what you do if this happens. All right. Run it off. I'm making a mess now. I might even have a pink sky. How's that? Yeah. We'll stain it anyway. So this could become quite an abstract. When I'm doing these sorts of things, it's quite often experimental because you, you've got to take the risk sometimes with watercolour. So many people think, oh, I've got to paint it like a, in a traditional manner, but I don't believe that. So I, I don't mind that. Yeah, we might come back in there. So I'll, um, I'll do some work down here because of that, and then I'll come back in here because I don't want to disturb that too much. I don't mind it at all. But I'm going to have to watch that. And has anybody got a 20 cent coin? You need that for your moon. <laughs> okay. So we might mix a bit more for the foreground. No, that, well, that's how it printed. And I don't mind that. I actually, I quite often print <coughs> just on A4 paper because I'm not that concerned about the exact colour in the scene because I want to paint how I feel it should look. Okay. We'll get a bit of this yellow oxide back in. And we'll come down here. So I have put a little bit of this texture paste down here for some little rocks that have tumbled down onto the plane. See, that's, that's drying quite well. It does sometimes, if you do a lot of water on it, it does sort of... Um, dampen it a bit but I think I prefer it to just straight old gesso I think that can be a bit boring okay All right. so once I get back into there is when I'm going to use this stuff surface tension breaker so I'm going to have to tilt this a little bit so I'll try and hold it up. Mm. Might even spray that a bit more. You can spray your watercolour when it's still runny, shiny, and let it run a bit. But once it starts to dry, don't do it. Okay. Because it, you get blooms or, well some people call them cauliflowers or back runs. And it's better to just leave it and then you could re-wet it again and come back in. So let's see if we can get some of this in. So I like things to be a bit connected, so I'm just sort of looking at some of the grooves now in the rock that I've created from the texture medium. starting to build up an impression of that rocky hillside. Yeah. And there's no reason why you can't add some darks as you go. I think, you know, I was taught, oh, well, let, do the darks last, but I was, um, I paint outdoors a bit with some quite good artists, and this was many years ago when I was beginning to paint on plain air. And one of our um, artists that was with us out in the Capiti Valley, she was an oil painter. And she came over and she said, oh, she said, well, what, what, where are your darks? And I said, well, it's watercolour. 
oh yeah. I thought, well, no, now you know. And she actually came up and apologised later. She said, oh, I'm so sorry. I just didn't realise. I thought she must have been thinking I was painting with very thin oil paint. So this usually lets it. I might even have to come back in with some more red, but I don't mind this sort of thing happening. So what's it actually do to it? Well, it's, it's, it, it thickens it a bit. But this is what you should be doing, this sort of thing. So I think I could probably do some more red, but when I come back in with inks and things, I can highlight things and make things happen that, are, that appear. This is a tricky way to paint, and it's not always for the faint-hearted. Some people get so stressed when I do a workshop. <laughs> I think, it's okay, it's just paint and paper. But yeah, they, um, they do, they get... They just get stressed. They're probably just stressed anyway. <laughs> it is, not it? Yeah. Oh, I had a lady that used to say, Oh, what's happening? What's the paint doing? All right. I'm going to add a bit more red in. The sky's a bit crazy at the moment, but something might, something might, good, might come. Not yet. No. There we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I mean, when when I'm painting a more traditional scene, yeah. it's definitely to plan. But this, I usually have a bit of an idea. Actually, I'm going to have to wash the sky off because I don't think I can leave it like that. <gasps> if you use a good paper, it shouldn't stain too much. This has a little bit, and I'm just going to let it run up. again in a while. A bit more yellow. You can see the texture in there is quite interesting. Yes. All right, we'll do that again. So there's a lot of tilting of the board in this sort of painting, just to see how we go. Um, don't mind that. Okay. It's probably too wet for a moon yet, but I will show you how to do it, even though my sky is going to be change somehow. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, tissue actually. You can't do it when it's too wet and you can't do it when it starts to dry. So you're just doing that. Maybe we'll try it there. It might have stained the paper too much. We'll see what happens. 
This is, I, that's how that moon was done in that little painting there. Right. Yeah, and that's got surface tension breaker sprayed into the, the paint. So that's how those runs, it makes it look like it's a cave or something there, or roots or something. Let's see. And another thing that I like to do is um, watercolour pencil shaved off with some um, sandpaper and you can put some textures and things in there or you can flick or splatter but this is really cool. This is how I do rocks like lucky stones and things. I'll show you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got a bit of a moon. Whoops. All right. I just wish they made bigger coins that were perfectly round when I do great big paintings because I've never found the perfect implement. Oh, some glasses, but then they've got a rim. And because the pat... Pardon? Oh, yeah, you could. Yeah. Right. So we... This, this is how you can add texture into a foreground. Just tear a strip off. But you've got to do it when it's still wet. And now you won't be able to do much. To, like You can't really disturb it now. It's stuck there. So it's not a good idea. Yeah. So any watercolour pencil will do the job. I found though that um, Faber-Castell and another brand I've got, if I'm working with colour pencil, another colour from one brand on top of the other, they don't work. Why? I have no idea. Yeah, so yeah, they've got to be watercolour pencils. You might even get a bit of that into there. So I'll probably just lie it flat. I'll get this other one out that I can work on. I'll just put that there. We might come back to that. So this this will be a tree trunk and rocks. And I'll I'll just use the same sorts of colours, I think, seeing we've got them out. And I mask with um, masking tape because I get sick to death of trying to peel off masking fluid and then I get all these hard edges and this is easier to soften. So when you're using masking tape, um, the main bit in here is just one big strip but then I start tearing strips because I actually like it to have a bit of a jagged edge, not a straight edge. So I'll do a sky. I might do a little bit. That's all right. I'll do a bit. Yeah, I've got water. I'll just do the sky first. Some people get really precious about changing their water every time and I've actually been in workshops with a couple of really top watercolour um, teachers like Joseph's Book Bitch and their water is putrid. <laughs> oh. And, and the, they probably never washed their brushes either. No, the, no, they probably don't prime the brushes but I mean I've, there's been ladies saying in the class, oh Joseph let me get you some water and he goes, nah, it's alright. And it's like dishwashing water, it's awful. Well, to prime your brush, if they've had a big workout, just get some soft soap and some tepid water, a few squirts of top soft soap in a jar, and you just give them a bit of a wash. And then rinse them, and then dry them flat. Um, because if you don't, I haven't got a brush with me today, but I've done this to one of my good brushes. The paint's um, chipped off, because the water travels down the ferrule into there, and then it expands the paint, and then when it contracts again, that's what happens. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, my son's last girlfriend 
she goes on, she makes stuff and she puts it on Etsy and she found them. So Etsy is the place to go for unusual handmade jewellery, I think. I just love them. E-T-S-Y. Yeah. This is a website for handcrafted things. So always try and clean around your edges. So that stops a back run occurring, hopefully. Just, and yeah, I always wait till the paint stops running before I go back into it. That's a much better sky. <laughs> All right. So I was reading a thing on, um, online about the Greeks and how they described colour. And it is totally different to how we describe colour these days. And it was something, there was something to do with Homer's Odyssey where the water was um, like, like wine. So it could be an allergy for a battle at sea where there's blood in the water. But it, when you read it, you think, well, how can the water look like wine or, or things like that? But that, that's how they describe their colours totally different to us, which I found quite interesting, but I had to read it twice, this article, because it was just pretty peculiar. I think it was in The Guardian. I read a lot of online stuff these days. I don't buy newspapers. Um, not that there's much point to buying newspapers, really. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting. And then their, their colour purple, which only the wealthy were allowed to wear, stank. So if you were rich, dressed in purple, you smelt. <laughs> Everyone would smell the rich people coming, I'm sure, from the description. Yeah. Yes, it was really weird. I thought, good grief. Okie doke. So, I'm probably <laughs> filthy rich. <laughs> it probably is. It probably is. Yeah. God knows what they use. Yeah. Well, I know in medieval times to make... Um, white leather, you soaked it in urine. Mm. And I would thought that would not be a very nice job being in charge of making the oh. white leather. Mm. And yeah, and then all plant materials to dye, to dye fabric with. And somewhere in India, I'm sure I've read or seen somewhere where they have these big vats that people work at that have all the coloured cloths in them. Yes, yeah. So I'm going to come back in now and just start putting the yellow down because I'm going to do this as a red tree, a red cliff, I'm sorry. So this has had the glad wrap treatment and I've scratched back in with a palette knife to put a few little grooves in the rocks. I actually really like bright colours, so I mean, there's nothing wrong with those pale little watercolours, but that's not my style, I suppose. And Helen here's seen how I do still life, and they're pretty wild. See, I, I love still life, and I cannot resist op shops because I find the most amazing um, shaped objects and quilting shops. I don't quilt, but I buy fabric from a quilting shop. Because the one in Richmond has thousands of bolts of fabric, I swear. And she knows me now. She says, oh, what are we painting? So do you use the fabric? Yeah, yeah as, a, as a still life setup. Yeah, I buy a beautiful bit of fabric and some nice objects. And oh, then... you don't put it down on the camera? No, no. Use patterns. Yeah, 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 just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. A person that influenced my still life recently is um, an artist called Shirley Trevener from England. Yeah. And she's amazed. Trevener, T E R E V E N A, I think. Yeah. They are, her work is just amazing. But it's, it's watercolour with mixed media. And she'll use oil pastel and soft pastels, some collage. And she loves fabrics and, you know. So she just put fabric down? No, 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 it's just, 
just paints, yeah, the design. So yeah, it's um, just good to get inspired by mm. how other people do things. Yeah. My my still life tends to be very different to what I do in landscape because I feel like my background as a graphic artist has heavily influenced oh, the way I put it. Yeah. yeah. So are you loose with your still life? Or oh, do you not. Need time? A bit tight, but I like to have soft areas. I use a lot of um, texture yeah. by building up in glazes, yeah. and you can just sprinkle water into it. If you're going to use a, have a red cloth, for instance, always put yellow, like any yellow really, raw okay. sienna or whatever, in, into the uh, on the base coat, and then put your red over the top because the red will be really vibrant. And I only noticed that one day because I was painting and I thought, oh, that red's dried awful. It's just really dried dull. And when I discovered that if I put yellow down, that made all the difference to the red. So it's just handy to know. So yes, I do use a fair bit of paint and I do find when I teach that I have students that put out half a tiny fingernail of paint to paint a half sheet. It's unachievable. It's not going to happen. But they worry about the cost of their materials. So, yeah. But look, a lot of this paint has been in here. I only cleaned it to come down yesterday. Well, I'll re-wet it every time. I just spray it. And the paint can be in here for a couple of years. I'll just yeah. keep topping it up. So do you have your own sort of studio space or somewhere where you can work? The top of the computer desk. Oh, well. My spare room. Yeah, yeah. That's where I started. My daughter left home and I told her she couldn't come back because I was <laughs> painting in there. But I have, I'm, I'm very lucky, I have a self-contained studio next yeah, to the house. Which I think is great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I wasn't thinking even of using it for that. I was actually thinking at one point of having a B and B because no one my son lived in there for a while. And then one day my husband said, Why don't you go and paint over there? And that's just what happened. Yeah. Oh, well, because I teach, I, if I get really messy, oh no, I teach Wednesdays, Thursdays, two, two classes on Wednesday, one on Thursday, so I've got Monday and Tuesday to tidy up if I've been in there making, a, making havoc. So you've got people to run that class? Yeah, yeah, my classes only have six or seven because um, I find that achievable mm. yeah. and they get plenty of time with me teaching. I know when I went to um, community college oh, over 20 years ago, I got quite frustrated because there was about 14 people in the class. And there was one man who used to do lots of homework and show everybody. It was like show and tell. And the teacher was too sweet to sort of say, look, can we do this in the break? But, uh, yeah, it was just a bit... wasn't really doing much for me. So I do think that if you can go to workshops, that's a really good way to um, to work and learn a lot that way because it's more intensive. You know, if you can do a couple of days with um, one teacher, you're going to learn a lot more than probably six weeks, two hours a week. Do you still do workshops? Yeah, I do. I haven't planned any yet for this year, but I will have to because our I'm a member of an artist trail and we put all the activities as members in our own studios, what we're going to be doing. So I definitely will be doing a couple this year. And they'll be mixed media probably. Is this the artist trail? No, no, this is the Hawkesbury. I've got a few little brochures, so um, I'll pass them around because we'd love some of these people from Sydney to come out and... Oh, I found the Hawkesbury Harvest, but I haven't 
Yeah, we've been going for eight years this year. And it just started because we have like Farmgate Trail and um, an Antiques Trail. So yeah, I think it was about time. And we actually were really lucky that one of the guys on the Antiques, no, he was on the Farmgate Trail even though he made rocking horses. His partner was in marketing and she wanted to just start this. So what she did was put an ad in our local paper and I was quite amazed at how many people turned up. Oh, we weren't that affected. Yeah, we weren't that affected. We were worried at Currajong Heights, but nothing happened, thank goodness. Yeah, yeah. My husband's in the RFS. So I was basically home alone for 10 days. So, so we've got we've got this happening. All right. So I'll um, I'll have to let it sit. I might run it off a little bit. Sometimes I just dribble surface tension. I don't know whether it's probably recommended to use it like that, but I'm sure Eliza would say no. I think it says on the jar, uh, one part surface tension break it or ten parts water. I have done, but this is this is. Yeah. I don't. Well, what? Yeah. What would it do with acrylics? What happens with acrylics? Ah. Wow. That's why you Yeah. Yeah. So I just thought I'd try it because I got some when I came to one of the um, open days. I thought, oh, I wonder what that does. <laughs> well, that's when I bought it when you showed Yeah, I remember your face. You were here in October, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, the last yes. one. And you allowed me to take a photo of That's right. That had it on. Yeah, yeah. So I'll leave that for a minute and we'll see what's happened down there. So I will have to leave it to dry for a, a little while. Hopefully it will. But I, I just like the way the paints settle into the ripples mm, yeah. that you've created. And you can come back in with inks and just one of those bamboo pens and draw back in. So we'll put that there. What we can do in here. Well, I'm working on an exhibition at the moment, and I went and looked through them the other day, and I thought I need to get them out and do some more because some of them are about three quarters finished, and there's probably about eight. Because we all get like this: we start something, and then we get inspired by something else, and then we start something else, and then we think, "Oh, I haven't finished that." Yeah. And because I do like to exhibit my work. I have to sort of make sure I've got enough to mm. put in frames. Yeah, oh no, I wouldn't get him to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it would. No, I, I have a framer at Emu Plains, but I do use Art Scene stock frames if I have to, but my framer matches their price. And I'll tell you, I did a still life, probably a bit bigger than this table. And I was really worried about how it would be framed. And it had to be framed under archival perspex because they don't have sheets of glass that big. And I had to drive to the art scene to buy the paper. So in that instance, because it was so big, I had 640 gram. I think the paper's called Elephant or something. And uh, it just fitted in my car and it was a bit bent. And when I got home, I immediately got out of the car and tipped it up the other way so it flattened. And then I looked at the white paper for two weeks because I was terrified oh, yeah, because right. you're thinking that paper's cost me $80 yeah. for one sheet of paper. So we all get like that. I don't, I mean, I think everybody sort of sometimes would go into their, their room or their studio and think, oh, I should start something. But it's, um, it's daunting, especially the, the bigger the sheet, the more daunting. How did it turn out? Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um, I ha it was good because she gave me six months to work on it because it was huge and I actually got some of her own objects to put into it because I felt like I could paint it from my heart but I'd prefer it if it had a few things that meant something to her. So she had some fabric 
and she had a beautiful sort of tall rectangular um, Japanese vase and I remember when I was painting it I thought oh now it needs wattle flowers and I was driving up Bells on a Road near where I live and I know there's a beautiful um, Kudamundra wattle so I had to stop and rip branches off and that, that day that went in because it just wasn't balanced properly. Yeah. But what she liked about this painting was that it had a lot of red in it. I grow those beautiful gum flowers and on my land because I just love them. And uh, yeah, so she said, oh, she drove from Wentworth Falls to where my exhibition was at Currajong just to see it and uh, just emailed me. She said, I want a, I want a commission. I thought, oh, yeah, one like that. <laughs> and then I went up to her house because I thought oh, I need to meet her to see what the, the house is like and we discussed the framing and she said either white or a pale blonde timber frame and I'm into white frames at the moment because I just think it looks contemporary and a lot of people want that on their walls so framing is very important and I see quite nice paintings framed with fence palings and I'm sorry but it's just not fine art then. It just looks like someone just ripped the palings off you know and whacked them together and there was a lady that lived in the Hawkesbury whose husband made her frames out of fence palings mm -hmm. but I just didn't think it did her work justice. Mm -hmm. It you looks know. great on there as outside. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it has its place but not, not on a beautiful painting no. because she could never sell it. People would I heard somebody at one of our local shows say, oh, I don't like the frame, it looks awful. Oh. But you couldn't tell this woman. She was like, oh, no. So, yeah, we're drawing. Well, I might have to um, try and work down here a bit. Is it okay if I use a hairdryer? Yeah. yeah? That neutral colour that you were talking about. Yep. That is just called neutral, isn't Yeah, it? neutral okay. tint. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's Windsor and Newton make it. I, I had never really used it, but I went to Alvaro Castanet. I had my name down for three years. Oh. And he... Yeah, but he shouts a lot. Not, not at us, at himself. You know, he'd be painting, he's going, Oh, Alvaro! To himself, and I'm... <laughs> Alvaro, yeah, he's he um he yeah he go he hasn't been to art in action. He goes out to the Bathurst winter uh, summer yeah. school, yeah. and you have to book in three months in advance. Oh yes, yeah, I went to him. Yeah, I like the fact that that workshop was called from drawing to painting because yeah. drawing is so important, yeah. and there were some women when I was in that class were a bit annoyed because all they wanted to do was paint but he said well on Wednesday we're going to start painting but I couldn't believe all the still life that he brought with him. So Dennis so Clark. Books, yeah. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah. Alright. Yeah so Dennis Clark if you want to get into drawing he he draws with sticks which I, I do anyway and he had so many interesting objects. I mean, he had a cow skull, um, an old lamp, a pumpkin. He picked up branches on the way up there on the Great Western Highway, a bottle brush or something. Quite, I thought he must have had a truck with the amount of materials he had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is he a TAFE teacher? Or he was. Yeah. 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 But, but a really good teacher and worth going to. Oh, he's good too. But he's his is an architect. Yeah, he does a lot of pen and wash. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have heard that. Um, yeah, I've heard a couple of other people that go to workshops say they wouldn't go back because it was, yeah, 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 he does hot press. Mm. Mm. 
nearly ready. I have to just make sure it's dry enough before I put ink on it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of really good um, tutors around, and you've just got to look for workshops that might be near you. Um, yeah, I even went up to the Grafton Art Fest for. Um, that's really good, and I went to a um, mixed media artist Judith White, yeah. and that was great fun. We actually went down to the beach and we gathered material, um, sketched and photographed things. Judith White, I, I like her mixed media, yeah, and she goes out to Bathurst, or she started going out there, yeah, yeah, you've got to book in the year before. Um, well, she does lots of collage and drawing in. And what I liked about her class was that we did go outside to draw and then come in and create pieces from that with collage and, you know, magenta paint and things. Some people get scared by that colour. But it really... Yeah, it's very staining. So I'll, I'll try a bit of ink. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It does. I think Dennis is a very good tutor too. He explains things well. Because if you get into a class where somebody sort of can't, they can paint but they can't t teach, that's the problem sometimes that you find. You know, and that's happened to me a couple of times. I've gone to a workshop and thought, well, I wouldn't go back. Mm. I love the way you go Yeah, yeah. So you could do some of that with watercolour yeah. as well with the wax lunch wrap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the Dera Matisse Derivan ink. So you can start drawing in. And I'll just use a bamboo pen or a stick. And um, start putting some little cracks and things in there. You can come back in with more paint as well when it's dry. This is just um, black. Yeah. It's still live that you did, the yes. big one. Yes. Is that just in watercolour? Yeah, all water. Oh, it had a bit of soft pastel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the rest is all water watercolour. And uh, a, a pencil that I love using is a Wolf Carbons pencil you can pass that round these are really yeah and you can wet that and soften the edges wolf's carbon pencils i use so many of them i just go and buy a box full for a, oh most art shops sell them but yeah the art scene well that's a 4b yeah anything in the three two to three to four b they're nice and soft you should never draw with an H pencil or an HB because they're too too hard and they can actually sort of damage your paper. So, yeah. it, it, because this is very textured, you've just got to come in a bit and um, go back over it. What have we got there? It's like a charcoal, but it's it's carbon and it's, it's soft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Some of the charcoal pencils are really hard, and I just like that one. Even the sticks. Yeah. You. Yeah, you would have done one of those um, drawings with a, an eraser in Dennis's class. Did you have to rub a whole full sheet of paper? Yes with soft charcoal and compressed charcoal. When I did his class, it was winter and it was bitterly cold outside. Oh, oh it was terrible. Yeah, that was a pain doing that, I must say. Yeah, I had... That's why I wouldn't want to do it again, because it seems to me that the computer is having the same pain. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. No, I think... But I think... I do think... Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So, so you, you start drawing in with some ink into the work. I mean, these take a lot longer than a normal watercolour would because you've got all the different mm. processes. But you could use um, different coloured inks. And burnt sienna is a really nice ink too. And I like these ones because they've got an eyedropper. When I buy ink sometimes, I think, oh, now I've got to dig that little cap out. Yay. And I get it everywhere. But this is great. And I, I collect ink wells. And I use them when I'm putting ink into my, um, my work. I'll just wash that off. Well, you can just dip, dip your oh. stick in because sometimes you've got a bottle of ink. You've got to be so careful. I've actually yeah. spilt black ink. Yes, yeah, so I'll try, try and get some of this nice red into there too. And I might bring that up there a bit. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean... Oh. Uh, Warwick Fuller. Yeah, I Yeah, he's a very nice man. I've never... Yeah. I, um, in the 70s, I lived at Glenbrook and the local school used to have, I don't know if they still do it, an art show. And I have got two Warwick Fullers. Oh. Yeah, and they really are lovely. He's a very clever man. But yeah, he's he's still painting and leading plein air workshops and things. So, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But then you've got, if you like oils, I mean, people rave about people like an artist like John Wilson. And he runs workshops at Blackheath. I just wish that there were a few more closer to um, where I live, I suppose, but a lot of them are in Sydney. Mm. So do any of you exhibit your work? Mm. Mm. It's hard, because you've got all those fees. I mean, it was $38 for one entry in the Royal Easter Show, and we have a, an, an art prize, and it's $50 an entry. And you don't get guaranteed that you'll get hung. No. And some of our local artists have been pretty annoyed about this because she wants us to support her Purple Noon Art Prize. And, I mean, sometimes you do wonder what the judges are thinking. Well, I, I actually get a bit annoyed because the last two years it's been a photograph that's won this art prize. And the, one before, the year before last, it was a man dressed as a woman with a beard, with a gun and a dead fox. And he won $10,000 for thinking of that idea. And then the one that won this year was a, a brother and sister who made flags on their computer of all flags from around the world and hung them on a hill's hoist. And she was hanging them out. <laughs> and that was a photo. Yeah, yeah. You think that would happen as a separate prize? Well, I think, from I think it should be. Because pa painting, I mean, yes, some ph ph photographers are amazing, aren't yeah. they? Mm. But, you know... Probably we're, we've got sour grapes because we didn't think of the idea, but I still don't know how that competes with a painting. No, no, I don't think so. No, it just, um, so yeah, some of the art, local artists are not going to enter it anymore, which I think is a shame because we were excited to have um, a local art prize because there's a lot of, like, the, you've got the Lane Cove Art Prize, the Portland Art Prize, the Camden Art Prize, and they are supported by councils and mm. local businesses yeah. and our council doesn't do much like that yeah. at all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right so I've put, put a little bit of burnt sienna ink <coughs> and might give it a little a soft spray to try and make some of it run. Did you add ink in this one? That's actually the wolf carbon pencil. Oh yes. Yeah. So buy, buy one and have a go, and you can soften it with a damp brush. Mm. So get the ink to run. 
Yeah. Yeah. I just think if you're going to do mixed media, go all the way. You know, have a, have a go and just see. It's only a piece of paper. It, and you might be really surprised at what you create. Not everything I paint ends up in a frame. Some of them, them are um, quite experimental. Yeah. 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 I once asked Joseph the Book Beach how many times he painted um, a painting for, to win the Campbellwell Prize, and he said five times. Five full sheets of the same scene, and then oh. I said, "All right, well, so which one was the best?" She said, "Oh, sometimes the first one is still the best." <laughs> so that's perfectionism, though. But you know, I think you have to be prepared to do that if you're going to exhibit in a prize like that, because it's um, good prize money. And I'm trying to think who won. A lot of watercolorists do, do win the Campbellwell, so I can't think who won it. I know Amanda Hyatt's won it once or twice. Um, I might use a bit of white. Oh, the Australian Watercolour Institute. Yeah, I entered, but I didn't get hung. Because if you get hung twice, then you can be recommended for membership. And Judith White told me I should, so I thought, oh, okay, I'll, I'll have a bash. Oh, yeah. But her point with with these institutes or groups like that. They're run by old men. Yeah, and she was trying to get more women, younger women, to enter their works because it's hard. You, I think that was about, that might have been $25 an entry and you have to send it on a CD. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, I was going to enter it last year, but I had a pretty bad year, and I just didn't. Or the year before, actually. So this this white ink, Eliza, is quite creamy. Yeah, that's Beautiful. I haven't used your white ink before. Oh, okay. I think I've got burnt sienna. Can you dilute the ink? Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah, yeah, I think these, um, I'll try and do, uh, this is what happens at home, or the dog walks on it. I end up in my studio with my three dogs, two cats and my daughter's dogs because she lives next door. Because I'm at home and her dogs, because she's, when she's at work, they come for a visit. Well, yeah, you, t you, you go to step back and a dog yelps and you think, oh, well, you know, move, you silly fool. Yeah. So the, the cats are new. They've, I've, I've adopted two Burmese, and um, they start. They like my studio because it's quiet during the day. They're over there now, and they were climbing the tree to get on the veranda and then meowing because they couldn't get in. <sighs> oh, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just pull that across. Well, one of them did actually, got on my work table while I was drawing and put him down and he did it again. So I'll just dry this off. And then I'll take this off and I'll show you how to paint the tree. Even on the edge, um, if, I, if I don't work on something for a while, I actually take it off the board and take the tape off because it can stick to it. 
and I bought some very cheap masking fluid from the reject, uh, masking tape from the reject shop and it didn't, didn't stick much at all, it was awful. So I just buy it from the hardware. My husband says, what do you want at Bunnings? And I usually say that. Yeah. Oh, just a glazier. And I like it because I actually paint um, from edge to edge on paintings. So I soak the paper. I've drawn my image, I soak the back, I tip it over, I soak the front, and then you let it sit for a few minutes, and then rub a towel over it, and it sticks to the perspex. So you get a very contemporary look to your work with the deckled edge of the paper. But when you frame it, you have to put um, mat board behind. You can't just do it onto the um, gator board. So that adds to the cost because it's a whole big bit. Yeah, float mount. I love doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I do I do that sometimes, not always. Depends on what, what's happening, but anyway, let's hope we can get this off now. Very carefully. I might start with that bit. Yeah, I just find it a bit off putting when you've got this bright blue or bright green or I, I bought purple tape once but don't buy that it's so low tack it doesn't hold your paper down so which one do you buy? Um, I've got the green one at home no, that, that oh this is uh, Koala I think Koala brand yeah yeah so that's how easy it is to peel off but if I'd left it on there for much too long I'd have trouble so I think that's a more realistic edge to a tree than masking fluid. And imagine how much masking fluid you're going to have to use on that. And some of this I'll probably lift off. I mean, this is a work in progress. I may decide some of it's too dark. Yeah, you just step with a damp brush. Um, I'm going to put that brush. Yeah. So I'll just do some on the tree. Move those now. I'll have another go with those in a minute. So I usually paint with a limited palette. Yeah. I did read an article that said, I paint with a limited palette and the guy had 13 colours in his oh. list. Because I've written art demos for um, a magazine and I thought, how can that be a limited palette? What are you limited by? How many you've got? <laughs> it didn't make any sense at all. Oh yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah. all those. Um, yeah, mix your colours. Yeah, don't always really, especially greens because Australian greens are really difficult to um, to do. And you, you know, like raw umber with cobalt, raw umber with cerulean, or uh, yellow ochre with cerulean. You get this beautiful greyish green. They're Australian greens. I have a guy that comes who's English and he's got all these English greens like Hooker's Green and I have to make him mix them with burnt siennas and things to try and get them to look a bit authentic. Yeah, he's a nice man, he's an architect so his work gets all fiddly and he comes, he's come to me to get loose so I said well you know we'll work on that. <laughs> Some people you can't, well you just can't change them. So this is going to be wet in wet, so you've got to get your colours ready. <coughs> and I'll probably just use similar colours to what I've had out, so it's really only like three or four colours. Okay. Might use... Yeah, yeah. There's something about it. It's not, it's, it doesn't jar you, it's got some sort of, I don't know, it's sort of almost a bit calm that you, you can see that it's not a dog's breakfast. Because sometimes, that's what I think some paintings, with too much, too many different oh, colours, just jangles. You think, Ooh. Okay, I might use some burnt sienna. But yeah, try some of these colours. These are um, really nice. I'm glad Eliza listened to me. <laughs> I know. I, well, my husband said that. You probably nagged the poor woman. 
because I think it's a shame that we've got all these imported paints and see some of these, I, I don't mind some art spectrum because they're nice colours, you know, they're for, for the Australian environment, whereas Windsor and Newton, they're quite expensive. But I love buying my Windsor and Newton in this size online. Online? Yeah, because it's, uh, this size, say in, in cerulean blue, I'm not sure of the exact prices, but this size was only about $7 cheaper than that. And that's, um, I think, 37 mils. Yeah. And that one is 14 mils. It's a huge difference. So if there's, if there's particular colours you use a lot of, buy them like that. I mean, I wouldn't buy Viridian like that because it's not a colour I use a lot of. But yeah, it's, it's worth going online for those sorts of paints. Um, somebody in my class has told me to go on to, to Cheap Joe's and there's Jackson's as well. And they are pretty good. And they do, you know, you get it within about 10 days because it comes from the US. I bought an easel from the US, a plain ears easel, and I get asked by people, where did I buy it? Because it's a camera tripod that's been made for artists and it's got a little tray that sits on the front and they make them for oil painters as well. Okay, I just need a bit of blue. Purple. No, we can't take them out of there. <laughs> oh, has it? Oh, that would be mine. Okay, yes, we can use that one. I wouldn't like to have a surprise. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okie doke. So quite often when I'm painting, I have different brushes for the different colours. See, and a lot of people make the mistake when they're mixing colour. They've got it right, then they wash their brush, but they don't dry it before they go to the next colour, and they're adding more and more water to the mix. So always try and dry it. That's why I have a towel or a sponge because it just makes it less likely to happen. So I think this paper is Arches. It's got a bit of a texture to it. Well, this is yellow oxide. This is the Derivan yellow oxide and it's very much like a yellow ochre or raw sienna. That's what I find a bit confusing though because you, every paint company calls it a different colour. Yeah. If you ask Joseph the book pitch what colour he was using, he'd just say blue, yellow or red. You're supposed to know if you're in his class. This is a, he usually only takes advanced students, which is fair enough. I don't think he suffers some um, yeah. beginners too much. Yeah. And he can be a bit pompous, but I think that's just some people. Have you been to his class? Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it, but the, the, I wouldn't go back because every time I see one of his student exhibitions at the Bathurst Mitchell School of Art, there's always the same paintings. Mm -hmm. Always the same scene with a dam and a mountain, some cows, horse. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, they do that. Yeah. Um, he and Herman. I think this time it was he, Herman and Alvaro. They painted a huge painting. I don't go on onto the campus much because I stay in town. I've got, I've got a husband that looks after me when I visit him. <laughs> he cooks for me. Well, maybe he's my wife. I'm not sure, but... Every, every, twice a year I go out there because he's a single ambu ambulance driver that I've known for 30 years and he says, oh yeah, come out. I'll look after you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know that um, some, of the, some people like the social life but I wouldn't get enough sleep. No. I'd be up all night. Yeah, 
Well, I do that at Art in Action sometimes. I just go down when they have their... Because um, they do one of those paintings for Art in Action mm. and um, raffle that. And I think some of the money goes towards Care Flight, or most of it. And those paintings, yeah, they go for you know, thousands of dollars. Mm. It's incredible. So I like wet in wet, just letting the colour yeah. run. Oh, that's just a bit of burnt sienna. I'm just going to add... I will add a bit of this because it's in the painting. Now, a lot of people get really frightened of painting watercolour like this, but that's what it should be used for. I'd love to paint like Turner. Uh. God. Oh God, when I saw that exhibition in Canberra, oh, good God, and he used to scrub his paintings, which I've done too, you go home and you think, oh that's a disaster, but you can use, you could use that as a base for something else in that painting. The nail brush. If you've got good paper, I wouldn't use Montmartre paper to do that with. I don't know that that would be a success. But no, I've scrubbed, I've scrubbed paintings in the bath yeah. with a nail brush. Not, not really hard, but give it a soak and then lift it out and um, loosen the paint. And I know it's flat again. Yeah. If they don't, put it on a board, put a towel on it, and as many books as you can carry. I don't tape paper, like that brown tape around my paintings. I can't be bothered. Mm. I went to a workshop with Jenny McNaughton and the guy in the, the classroom, a lovely man, had stretched something like 20 boards. She couldn't believe it. She said, we're not even going to paint that many. He says, oh, yeah, but I like stretching paper. <laughs> so this is interesting because this is um, pushing that paint How away a bit. Yeah, this is just that cobalt. So this is wet Yeah, but look what's happening. Oh, yeah. And that's pretty groovy. Yeah, it is. You know, so you need to experiment with your paint mm. and see what they do. Because different brands, like this has actually got um, art spectrum in it too. I might mix a nice bit of dark stuff and I'll use some neutral tint now. I'll go into that. So this is neutral tint and burnt sienna. And you can see it's already gone really dark. Yeah. And then add a little bit of your blue to it. But I've never heard of neutral tint or used it until about three years ago. And I think, well, it's pretty um, interesting how it... No, no, you don't make a neutral tint. No, no it's just Winsor & Newton. And I only bought it because I was in Al Rowe's class and I thought I should try what he suggested. So this paint, I mean, if you're a watercolourist and you've, you're reasonably good at it, you know that it's got to be a bit thicker if you're going to put it into a wet wash because otherwise it just spreads. So this is, cr this is quite creamy. And how I know is, I run my finger through it, all right? Just like you're doing a jam test. <laughs> yeah. So while it's wet and shiny around the edges, you might think, oh, I could, I might bring that dark up here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what. Yeah, we've. Yeah. No, he was on there, and Joseph's always already done one as well. Yeah, because I watched them on YouTube, but they are—they were on Foxtel, because that's how I found them on some funny channel called Aurora, I think. So it has fishing shows, and the guy that does the colour in your life's on a Harley and leathers, and it's quite. I thought, what is this? But yeah, that was. I, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just 
goes for about half an hour or something, yeah, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. Alvaro is a really lovely man, don't get me wrong. I just couldn't hand, handle the shouting. And what happened was oh, my sister just passed away. And my, my whole family said, Mum, you've got to go, you've paid your money, don't, we don't want you to stay at home. I think, thanks. So I was a bit shell-shocked and, but, you know, after a while I got used to it. But he, he's just so passionate. He really is a passionate painter. And, you know, and he's just sort of yelling, Oh, Alvaro! <laughs> and he's, that's why he, while he's painting on his painting, and, I think if I did that, my students would leave. So I'm going to use some inks again. So with ink, pull some branches up. If you're going to enter a watercolour section, you probably can't do this. But mixed media or contemporary, Sometimes I've done this sort of thing and I've had a monoprint collage for it for the tree, which is quite interesting. I've had people say, oh, I like the way you're doing that. But that's what I'm sort of working on at the moment. Maybe pull that out there. So either use a stick or something like this because it or a brush is not going to give you this sort of no. rustic, rustic sort of look. Yeah. I think I've always liked pen and ink. Now I'm giving my age away. When I was at school, we had to use dip pens. And I was in loads of trouble because I used to draw in all my school books. I just can't, you know, it's just sometimes children can't do that. Yeah. You know, they, they can't sit there and write things. They've got to doodle and stuff. So, yeah, a lot of my books were illustrated. <laughs> I remember one teacher didn't like it. She was quite cross. And now, I'm going to put some ink in here so it's dry enough. Yeah, where do I put the black? Come back in there. The Derivan make a few different colours. I think I've got... Yeah, I've got a few colours. I think I've got a red Derivan ink. Oh, yeah, she's got a few there. So there's orange, violet. Oh, what a violet. See, she, she'll let me have it. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, I think I'll put some of that in. Yeah, I don't get paid for this, but I get promotion and I get materials to try out. Because I just think it's great fun to play. It really is. It is. is. Yeah. It's great fun to watch. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's not too bad. I'm just sort of travelling along some of these sort of grooves. I find when people do this in a workshop, I've actually had people ring me later on and say, oh, I've just really started noticing rocks or trees. It's like when you show a student how to paint a tree, suddenly they're looking at tree bark. When they do reflections or sunset skies, I had one girl, she used to drive across the river at North Richmond every week to get to me, and she said to me, oh, tonight you should have seen that beautiful sunset. Mm. And I, that's what I like to hear. Mm. Mm. It's funny, you, you see it's yeah. Actually, I, I Yeah. And I've oh. made a comment oh, yeah. 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 Well, clouds are always Yeah. yeah. I've trained my husband to look at the world through artist's size. Mm. And now he'll say, is that a photo opportunity when we're zooming along at 120 <laughs> k's an hour? Or I say, stop the car. And you go, where? <laughs> oh, 10 k's back. <laughs> yeah. I, I took a, I, he did stop for me one day. We were out west. This is years ago. And I've never seen a cloud do this, but it was actually a blue sky with a cloud rolling over the top of a hill out in the bush. Mm. Yeah. I think it, it does have a name, that kind of cloud, but anyway. So I might hit this with some water in a minute. No, no, just, just a spray. So you can set, 
you, you can do a lot more with this. You could come back in with some oil pastel or coloured pencils. Whatever it wrote, um, rose your bow. But I might even put... Oh, it might be too dry. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, my seven-year-old grandson is quite artistic and he actually sees things like we do. And we were down at my dam the other day and he went, oh, wow, look at that bug. And he starts poking at it with a stick. And I went, do you know what kind of bug that is? He said, no. I said, well, why should you be poking it? He went, why? What would happen? I said, well, I think it's a stink bug. Yeah. And he went, no, it's a paper bug. So we went upstairs and I Googled it. And I said, see that bug? That could spray juice into your eyes or whatever it does. Dangerous. And make, yeah, they are. But it was red. And I had probably a different stage. It's, um, yeah, it was beautiful, but not the sort of thing you want to poke with sticks. But he sees things like that and he knows now. So I say to him, um, why can you see that so well? And he says, because it's red. Because anything where you put red in a painting draws your eye. Okay. So, I might give this a little, a little squirt. So, I'm trying to get that just to go through into some of those little wrinkles. So Eliza, when do you think in March that these paints might be on the go? Yeah. Is this a new line? Yeah, yeah, because I've had actually had people asking me that know what I've been doing with the testing. Mm. So have you had watercolour paints before? No. no. Oh. I mean, we've always made watercolour paints, but it's now Yeah. 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 I'm I'm really quite pleased because you know, I, I thought, oh, if they're like student quality, they may not be what I would want, yeah. but I feel that these are artist quality paints yeah. because of the quality of them. Student yeah. quality is got less pigment and more filler. So if you buy a very cheap paint, you're gonna use a lot of it because it's not going to travel far. Yeah. And I do have students that come along that will you know, one lady used to buy it from a news agent's. God knows why. Well, it was, but but she, yeah, but she she did continue with that because she couldn't see why you'd spend money. But her complaint was she had to use so much more because it's got it doesn't have the pigment. Yeah, it is. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and I know there's a few brands like Mari's, I think, but. I mean, I just think if you're going to be a serious about pr yeah. producing artwork, try and use the best materials you can. Yeah, especially if you've got a Yeah, yeah. Mm. You, I know I, we had one of those shops called the Art Shed at Penrith, and I went over there just to check it out, and I did buy some paper. What I found was that was only sized on one side. So you can't use the other side. I can. If I don't like a painting, I just flip it over and use the other side. But you couldn't do that. And I thought, well, that's, that's a bit false silly. Economy. It's false economy again. You know, you can get away with cheapish brushes. That's true. But not paper and paint. I mean, some of my brushes, oh, like these ones, they're just from a $2 shop. Montmartre. And that little one. But you can use them. They're acrylic brushes, but you can use them for watercolour, and that's got a beautiful point on it. So, yeah, you, you can... You can use them. I wouldn't say you've got to go out and buy the most expensive sort of brushes. I might just see what happens with a bit of this white, get a bit of light back in. So 
So when this dries, you'll see a lot more texture appear. It's weird how it happens. But does it dry much lighter? Yeah, it yeah. Does quite a bit, does it? These paints seem to be on par with most other watercolours I've used, that they dry about 10% lighter. But that's, you know, that's another lesson in life when you're starting to paint watercolour, because you think it looks fine on there, you put it on there and it dries. Well, what have you got? Mm. It's too pale. So yeah, that I, I do find that difficult sometimes with some students that they they think it looks fine, they put it on, I make them test all their paint, the colours that they've mixed before it goes on their paper. Yeah, this is quite interesting. Oops. So I'm gonna squirt water into the white as well, see what happens. But I think you could do a whole painting with some of these inks, they're beautiful. Yeah. I like drawing with pen and ink, but I don't usually use coloured inks for that. I like sepia and burnt sienna. I sell a lot of drawings like that. Usually of old buildings, where people are very sort of sentimental, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can introduce lights. I could also sort of scrub some of that back if I wanted to. Mm. At home, you've obviously got the luxury of a couple of days and not an hour or two, but um, yeah. Let's get a bit of flow on it. Now that paste, when it dry, yeah. when your paint's dry, yeah. and if you happen to bend the painting, would it crack? Oh, I've never noticed it too. It doesn't sort of lift? No, yeah. I don't think so. I found that gesso can flake off a bit, but this stuff sort of, I don't know what's in it, sort of, Sticks it's silky it. yeah. when you put it on. It's got a sheen to it, and then it dries just like that, really. Look at that. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, have a play with these materials to see where it takes you. I mean, I never imagined when I started out many years ago that being a traditional watercolourist that I would get involved in all this caper, but I think it's just as an artist you start to grow and explore. Mm. And I, you know, I think, yeah, when I was just doing traditional watercolour, I was probably quite comfortable winning prizes and things, but I actually sort of started to get a bit bored with <laughs> my subject matter. Yeah. You know, and you want something yeah, yeah. So you can go to workshops and play for five days, and think, yeah, I like that. I'm going to do that when I get back. So we'll just so it'll look different when I take the border off. So I might let it. You know, but yeah, let. Sometimes when that's still wet, if I've got time, that's when I shave pencil shaving the watercolor pencil, and you get little speckles. Yeah, that's on the other one. We'll get the other one. I'll get it. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, yeah, this this one I would probably be more... Oh, in, down there. Yeah. Down there. Oh, right. yeah. yeah. I mean, fortunately, the sky's a little bit sort of crazy and I'll have to do something with it, maybe. But I'd like to come in with this maybe at home, if I'm going to take it further, with oil pastel and put some trees and things because... They are in this painting, in this yeah. picture. But I don't want green grass. It wasn't green when I was there. Yeah, Maybe. That's what I was about the yeah, but the colours on my printer, they do come out yeah. rather bizarrely. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so yeah, this, this could be taken further than this. And that's just a start, really. Yeah. You know? So, what would you do with the sky? Oh, I might wash it back a bit and try and do it again. It's just that that magenta will stain. So, yeah, it's very strong. Um, it's still, it's still a lot of movement. You do, you know. Yeah, I, I probably would just look at it for a while. That's what I do at home. I paint things and then I might put them in my house where I'm walking past or sitting and I can see what's wrong. 
Also, flip your drawings upside down or your paintings upside down if you're not sure. And that actually abstracts it and you'll see parts of it that you really like. You know, same with your drawing. If you've got a problem with perspective or ellipses, anything like that, turn your drawing upside down and you just don't think, oh, well, that's a, a jug. You just see the shape is wrong. So but I think the colours work well together. Yeah. So try lifting out a moon, but you've got to wait till really the shine has almost gone and then you have to hold that coin on there with your tissue. But that's just a little trick. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. See, this painting here took took a, a bit of a bit of a while, a while because I wasn't sure where I was going with it, and I actually scrubbed the foreground, and then I found rocks were there. So that's how they became rocks, and I just really liked that. But this is all oil pastel, and oil pastel is a really lovely medium because it's very tactile. I don't much like. Um, Soft pastel because of the feel. I'm con constantly wiping my hands. Yeah. 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 Oh, actually, you should because I know a lady that used to live up where I am that had lung cancer and she was not a non smoker and she was a pastel artist. So you should wear a mask. So I hope that you've. Yeah, gloves. I mean. Yeah. Oh, that was excellent. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, thank you for having me and I hope at least you've got a bit of inspiration to go away with and try new things.